I have a bit of background on the farm. Um, we're farming in a family farm partnership with my parents, Seamus and Marie. Uh, we're milking 120 uh, spring cabin cows, British region type uh, supplying to Columbia. Uh, we also have a beef finishing enterprise and we're fattening about 100 cattle each year. And we rear about uh, 20 to 25 heifers for replacement each year. Well, we're focusing on the uh, replacement heifers, I suppose they're probably the most important animals in the herd. Um, it's uh, fairly important that we reach the target of 24 months, uh, having calving at 24 months because it's probably the most uh, profitable and labour efficient uh, way of, of, uh, of rearing them. And uh, on the farm here we're trying to improve our solids and uh, I suppose the quickest way to do that is through genetic improvement and uh, by having that way, having the heifers calving at 24 months, um, we can ensure that. With the colostrum uh, management, uh, the, our system now uh, is that we take the calves from the cows uh, as soon as possible after calving and uh, they're given uh, about 3 litres of colostrum or in around 10% of their, of their body weight and um, by giving them the colostrum ourselves we know exactly what the calf is getting and uh, they're getting the best possible start in life and, and uh, I suppose that kind of helps their uh, live weight gain over, over life. Uh, we're also, we test the colostrum now uh, which we never did before and uh, it's amazing the difference in the quality of, of colostrum between each cow. So I suppose that's a, a big benefit as well. The pre-weaned calf then, uh, we, we feed each calf a uh, colostrum for in around three days and uh, they're then brought to the main house and uh, they're built up over an eight to ten day uh, period up to about six litres of milk. From day three they've access to a starter calf, muesli ration. Uh, just to kind of encourage a bit of room and development in that and they get good straw uh, and what, access to water as well. The calves are born into clean, clean calving pens and uh, as I said before they're taken away from the cows uh, preferably within the first hour. Uh, they're put into um, a well bedded barn pen uh, for the first three days where they're getting the colostrum and then they're moved to the main calving house um, where they're kept in group pens of no more than five or six at a time. The pens are bedded uh, daily, they have a good bed straw and they're cleaned out weekly. And uh, then I suppose if the weather is, is milder, uh, that we have access there to a um, to ventilation system that we can, that we can turn on there and if, the, if the weather gets mild and, or the shed gets a bit stuffy. So for weaning, uh, then we generally, beforehand, we, used, we would have weaned maybe about 8 to 10 weeks um, and that was just the final sort of way we weaned, but uh, I suppose we work now with, uh, with James in the heifer rearing programme and uh, we now we wean the calves uh, when they're 100 kilos and uh, when they're eating a kilo of nuts um, it's in around uh, 56 to 60 days of that and uh, it's working very well and, and, and uh, the fact that we can uh, that, that we're weighing them monthly now uh, you can spot a slower drinker or one that's underperforming and she might take a little bit longer to wean uh, but I think it shows uh, later on in life Switching from milk replacer, yeah, it's certainly something that we have uh, thought about. Um, I think with the cost in that, uh, we probably will, um, once the, the another quota has, has gone, we probably will go down the, the milk replacer route. And uh, so it's the added benefit that it has that sort of consistency that maybe whole milk uh, may not have had in the past. So it's definitely something we'll look into in the future. The calves were turned out quite early this year uh, with, the, with the good weather there in April. And uh, so we generally dose calves uh, after three weeks after turnout. Uh, we, we don't let them graze down the paddocks too very to, for the worm um, count. Um, uh, we try to alternate then between uh, drugs, between avermectin type uh, drugs and levomysole uh, just to keep the resistance right. And uh, we, we dose them again at about 8 weeks and then again around 15 weeks. The uh, Lambia Heifer Rearing Monitor uh, farm sort of, uh, has been very beneficial for us. Um, we got a James came and did a, an, an initial assessment uh, on the farm and uh, he spotted any, any little changes that we could make just to help uh, things and we've definitely noticed a bit of a saving in, in labour and actually straw usage because we're, we don't have cows under our calves for uh, three or four days that we, as we would have in the past and uh, the calves are a lot less stressed as are the cows when we were taking them away from the, from the cow. Uh, also the, monitoring, the monthly monitoring of the of the calves, the weighing of them is, is really beneficial. I mean, we, we wouldn't have uh, done that before, and we really do see the progress of the calves as, as they're as they're growing. And um, 
to us uh, as well as that we can get uh, we have great access to plenty of advice there from James and our own business manager there I suppose uh, any advice is just they're at the other end of the end of the phone so it's be interesting to see now in the next uh, year or two how, how the the this year's uh, crop are performing the heritage we start to move forward in this year as well so I think uh, we'll be able to see that and, and hopefully uh, we can we can continue on with the with the program.